Boxing Day, first of all, can you give us a sort of a bit of detail on the side that you're going to field? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, can I put the 22 out, Phil, or not? Or do you, are you going to release that? Uh, we'll do it on Monday. Yeah, we're going to release the 22 on Monday. Uh, obviously, this time of year, as you can imagine, James, like we come in this morning, we've got a player sat down out of training. Nothing too bad at all that's not going to, he's going to keep him off his feet for a couple of days. Uh, so we're going to put a team out on uh, on Monday. But yeah, we're running with a, a you know, very much a, as strong as we can starting team and, uh, and, and really every fit and available player uh, that hasn't got any little bumps, bruises, strains will play. Uh, probably with the exception of Matt Primate, we think Matty, uh, given where he's at, given what we want to do with him in pre-season, having a game of rugby at this point in his pre-season, um, you know, he's not really going to be too beneficial for him. So Matty is the only one um, who, in terms of fitness and availability, that we won't consider for selection. But everyone else, mate, that's fit and well, uh, will be considered for selection. You know, one of, one of our reasons we want to... Uh, use it as part of our pre-season preparation and see how we go and, and gives an indication of where we're at. We're definitely not expecting to be where we need to be come round one, that's for sure. Uh, quite certain of that uh, because of what we've done and what we've not done. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I want the new signings and a couple of the young guys to really experience what a home game at Headingley is all about. You know, there'll be a terrific atmosphere, hopefully a, a great crowd. Um, and yeah, get a get a feel for uh, feel for what a home game is all about because they're pretty special occasions. So all of the new signings could feature. Well, David Fussy too will got off a plane at the weekend, um, so I think it's fair to say in seven to ten days' time, it's probably unlikely that Dave's going to be up to speed enough to to throw him into this one, but. But Caesar, Austin, Bentley will all play. We'll all start here. What do you want to get out of that particular fixture? Uh, injury free for starters, uh, and look, just see where we're at, James. I think uh, you know after where are we now? Week, week four, week five. I, I just don't think we're going to look anything like we need to look. But at the same time it gives us an indication of some areas that we might need to work on a little bit stronger and harder. And, and I know it'll certainly give us some positives as well on, you know, this is probably a bit better than what we anticipated. So, so certainly, I guess, um, from a cohesion structure point of view, um, it'll give us some ideas. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think we can use it wisely in, in terms of, you know, physical conditioning and, and a really good hit out to, to gauge where we're at in that sense too. Uh, but you know players, mate, and this is the same for both sides. There'll, there'll be stuff as coaches we want to get out of it, but at the same time, the very competitive beast, you know, in terms of, uh, of our own club, and I can speak about, we've got competition for places this year, and we've got pretty hot competition for places for round one. So it, so it definitely gives individuals uh, a really good opportunity to say, you know, hey, look, I'm in business this year and, and I'm in I'm in really good shape, even this early. From what you've seen in training, how promising does the Austin Caesar combo look? Oh, again, it's early days, mate, but I, I just the fact that we've played together before uh, has given them a head start, really, and, and coming in cold and, and having to learn a, uh, a, a team's principles and, and style of play and build up those relationships around them. But just the fact that they've already got that relationship uh, makes the understanding, uh, makes the communication and dialogue uh, and any, any fix-ups really, James, make, makes it a, a, a lot easier. So, yeah, good, mate. They've both had a, you know, a really positive contribution. We've had a good week this week and uh, uh, we run, run some good ball stuff yesterday and, yeah, they, they got on the same page very, very quickly. On a more broader point, obviously COVID is still a massive threat at the moment. Are you yeah. guys taking any extra precautions right now? Um, all our guys, uh, we've got a group booking, I believe, uh, next week, next Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday, for everybody to to receive the booster. Uh, there's a couple of guys 
it won't be boosted and it'll be sort of second, you know, they're around second jabs or they've had the second jabs and, and can't get boosted just yet. Uh, obviously, our protocols internally are as robust as they've been uh, for a long time. Leading into the game, we've asked the players to be, you know, as vigilant as we possibly can be moving up to it. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. It seems to be one of them at the moment. Are you relatively optimistic that we'll have a, a probably an issue free season next year? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know, James. I think I think at the moment it, 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 there's some pretty doom and gloom scenarios every time we flip the news on, uh, and, and the experts uh, have been worth listening to, to. To be fair, over the course of time, so you would anticipate that the next two, three, four, five week are, are probably going to be pretty testive, and then. I think we're also stepping into a bit of the unknown. Uh, but again, mate, we better you better listening to the experts on the news tonight rather than listening to, to my opinion on it. But I guess we're ready for it. All we can hope is that there's enough measures in place and uh, you know rates as such, and uh, in terms of the strength of the virus that that we can cope with what's coming our way over the next month or so and, and get out of it pretty quickly. A couple of final points from me. We, we just mentioned the, about the new signings. Obviously, the retention can be just as important as, as recruitment, can't it? Um, we've seen a, a number of new deals. Are there more still to come? Yeah, we're on with it in the background. Uh, they're never easy where agents are involved. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I'm only joking there before anybody reads that and listens and starts uh, thinking anything untoward there. But look, we're, we're on with yeah, we're on with a number of guys in the background and, and working through it. You know, it's not it's generally not something that happens in, in 24, 48 hours, but but we'll work through yeah, not a number of guys and uh, see where we get to so we will see where we get to over the coming weeks. I think it's fair to say it's pretty obvious uh, we've got a plan where that's concerned. We're looking to to tie down uh, but particularly a number of our players that are coming into the last years of the deal and and uh, especially our younger guys that we see representing the club for the next five to ten years as well. You know, we, we're really happy with the progress that those guys have made. Uh, we've always said that that together we think they've got, a, as well as on-field understanding, uh, they, they've got a strong emotional attachment to each other at the moment that we think we can build on and, and really move us forward over the coming seasons. So, yeah, we, we're looking at... Uh, Looking at a, a number of a number of ways that we can uh, tie down in, in different ways, uh, quite a few players, mate. What about tying you down? What, what, what's the situation with with you as it stands at the moment? Uh, same as it's been for a long, long time, mate. Despite what uh, I think gets written in the press from any little rumours that occur, um, I think my position hasn't changed for a while. I think Gary put out there last year. Um, quite a while back actually that I'd be coaching the team this year and and that is as it stands mate I, I'm on a rolling deal so um, it, it's not something that really I think is worth the speculation at this moment in time I've been quite surprised by a bit of the speculation actually given given that Gary put out there I think we both put out there last year that you know I'd be I'd be running around again this year and then we'll see how we go you know I'm in, I'm in a sort of comfortable position that if the club and the players want me to coach beyond next year uh, and I want to do it, I will. And if they don't, we don't. And we'll address that when we come to it. But it, it's very much business as usual, mate, despite any little bits and bobs of uh, uh, speculation and innuendo that seep out there. I, you know, I think I think as an organisation, we've been pretty clear on that too. Just finally, finally, apologies. Um, what's on your Christmas uh, list this year? Uh, well, I've got the cooking duties. Um, yeah, my assistant coach and his family's on his way around to ours too, so that could be interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, quiet one, mate, with Boxing Day game. It'd be a, be a quiet one. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the Christmas list, or oh, I'm past all that, mate. I, uh, I, I cop it the other way around, mate. I'm the one that does the buying of the presents. Uh, so, yeah, any anything that's, that comes my way, I'll be gratefully, gratefully received. Match orange matchmakers and mint matchmakers, they use the hunt list. That's about as good as it gets for me, pal.
Yeah, yeah. And, and just just on just on contracts as well. I mean, like I say, obviously, valuations of players can be a can be a very sort of subjective thing. But yeah, what what, what sort of processes do do you go through then when, when you're sitting down with with the I imagine you sit down with Gary and other people like that and say this is when you're deciding how you value players and and what sort of things you look at in that regard? Well, I could have a bit of a joke here and say I sit down with Gary, listen to his thoughts, tell him to tear his paper up and get his. <laughs> Get his wallet out of his pocket. Um, but I am only joking. That's a reputation <laughs> that has long gone where Gary's concerned. No, look, I, I'm lucky in, in a way. Uh, look, Kevin, you know, I used to work very closely with Kevin on this. Mm. And uh, uh, and obviously now it's Gary. Uh, and I'm working, you know, Gary's an extremely experienced administrator and negotiator. I think in terms of uh, values, uh, again, it's collaborative. Um, it's not something I want to get into too much with the players individually um, because I think as their coach, it's great that we have a relationship, but money is not generally part of that because I think that's something that can can definitely, um, you know, create friction or tension at times if, if the, you know, if, if it's going either way in terms of negotiation. So I very much leave that to Gary and, and to be honest, the players leave it to their agents uh, but I think, you know, market values, um, you know, we've been in the game long enough, we all have an idea. That that's the sort of thing that can make or break your club if you get your values right or you get your values wrong. And I think you've got to understand that situationally, sometimes you may well have to uh, compromise on your values because of the particular, the particular scenario at, at that moment in time. But... Keeping it all uh, in kilter is is probably the key to having a healthy roster and salary cap. How's Jack Walker's injury coming along? How is he looking? Yeah, all right. He's uh, we've had to be careful with him. So he's had uh, he's had a couple of sort of how to say just minor hamstring strains a little bit, and that's because um, if you think Jack's been inactive for a long, long time, he's been off his feet. Uh, he's had an, an injury to his foot that's probably changed uh, you know, from a biomechanical perspective, changed the way he's run a little bit. So it's put different stresses and strains on his calves and his hamstrings. So we've had to nurse him along really carefully. He's come back in really good shape. It was something that we did when we challenged him uh, when he were off that um, to get a little bit more robust, stick a little bit more armour on him up top. And, he, and he's done that. He looks a picture of health. Uh, he's been moving really well. But yeah, we're just, just taking him along gradually because he's just had a couple of couple of moments where he's uh, he's tightened up and, and sort of tweaked a little bit. Uh, and we understand that. You know, we, we've delved further into that a little bit and uh, and got some answers as to why he was feeling a little bit tight. Um, but it's good we've got them answers and it's enabled us to, I guess, uh, make some modifications on the way forward with him. But yeah, we we think Jack will be, you know, good to go on fighting for a place in, in round one.